My guest has intelligence information that is so hot, the secular press doesn't dare report it. Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. I wouldn't want it any other way. I love breathing the rarefied air of heaven. Here, take a little. I mean, I, I feel like it's radiating out of me, and it has to for what you're about ready to hear because my guest, Gary Kaw, has information that the secular media has intentionally blocked from the American public because he is an expert in end times. Uh, he's been literally called by God from a, a, a youth to study the economic, the uh, political, the religious system, and the forerunners of what the Antichrist is doing. And it's like a really behind the scenes interview. Uh, Gary, I'm very intrigued. Uh, your father, uh, was involved in uh, running, fleeing from Nazism and communism. And there was, as a young boy, there was something you couldn't understand. What was it? Well, that's right. When my parents shared with me what they went through during World War II, my father fleeing from the Nazis and communists and becoming a refugee, my mother growing up under Hitler in Germany, and her father, my grandfather, being so outspoken against Hitler, that the mayor of his village had to intervene on his behalf once so, so that the Gestapo wouldn't haul him away. And growing up and hearing about these stories, I thought, how could that have happened in Germany and the surrounding areas where there were so many Christians at one time? You know, I've, I've often wondered that, uh, but you know, there really is a spiritual blindness that can come on people. Definitely, and, and uh, being a, a aware of that and understanding that uh, by sixth grade, I remember making a commitment in my public schoolroom in Kettering, Ohio, that if anything were to ever happen in this country, like what happened in Europe uh, during Hitler's day, that I would take a stand for what is right regardless of the cost. And I remember very clearly praying that prayer, and it was during a world history session in, in, in sixth grade. And I never thought that the Lord would take me up on that someday. But that was a very, it was literally a vow that you made and I think if you knew what you were into right now, you may not have made that vow. And, and your training was really uh, very, very interesting. After college, you were the European Middle East trade specialist for the state of Indiana. Um, and uh, you went to, uh, how many was it? 30 different countries, uh, including Israel. And this was preparing you for what you were called to do. But the thing that is so uh, fascinating to me is there was an election in Kenya and one of the men that was running in this election to be the head of Kenya, uh, he, he has a very famous cousin. Tell me about him. Well, the, the name of this gentleman, this was a few years ago, he's running for president of Kenya. His name was Raila Odinga. And uh, in an interview with uh, the BBC uh, in, I believe it was in early 2008, he revealed that he is the cousin of Barack Obama. And in fact, uh, his exact words were that uh, at that time, Senator Obama's father was Odinga's maternal uncle. In other words, Odinga's mother and Obama's father are sister and brother. So they're pretty close biologically. They are pretty close biologically, according to Odinga, yes. Now tell me about this uh, Odinga that was running for president. Well, at the time, he was arguably the most radical Muslim leader in Kenya and had a group of other Muslim leaders under him at that time. Now, when he did not win, what happened? What did his followers do? Well, 
they went out on a rampage, and approximately 800 churches in Kenya were torched, and about 1,000 Christians lost their lives. And over here in the secular media, it was presented as being a civil unrest, but really it was uh, a lot of persecution against Christians. Things got so bad that the government of Kenya stepped in and said, okay, in order to have peace, uh, we'll make you, Raila Odinga, we'll make you our prime minister. Mm -hmm. And so he is now prime minister of Kenya, uh, along with a president from a different party whose last name is Kibaki. So the two of them are ruling jointly. Uh, you could argue that uh, Odinga has the upper hand, and in order to try to get elected when he was running during his campaign, uh, he promised his followers that he would try to institute uh, Sharia law if he got into power. But the thing that is so amazing to me is a group gave one million dollars for this man that literally his followers murdered over a thousand Christians, torched hundreds of churches, and the money that came in, a million dollars, according to, uh, I've, I've examined the sources, who did this come from? It came from an organization called uh, Friends of Senator B.O., in other words, Friends of Senator Barack Obama. So apparently people who are close uh, to Barack Obama, they donated uh, 66 million Kenyan shillings, which translates into about $950,000. Uh, toward Odinga's election campaign. I don't understand why the media is not concerned. Do you understand that? I don't understand why the secular media is not shouting it from a rooftop. Uh, but, you know, you know you, you've gotten into trouble because of this vow that you've made many times. Uh, for instance, you found there was a new currency system being set up in the early 80s uh, for the United States of America, and you were, you were warned not to talk about this type, sort of thing. Explain. Well, back in February of 1984, um, I was invited. I worked under the, the lieutenant governor of Indiana at the time. Uh, I was invited along with some people from the mayor's office of Indianapolis and also some people from Senator Richard Luger's office to tour a manufacturing facility in Indianapolis that was planning a major expansion. And after taking the tour, we discovered the reason they were planning to expand was because they were to print the new printing presses that would be printing the new U.S. currency. So, of course, our natural question was, what new U.S. currency? Right. You know, we all worked for the government. We didn't know anything about it. And so I began doing some digging into it at that time. And, of course, that new currency began to come out in 1996. So we found out about this some 12 years before it actually happened. And the ultimate goal uh, was to uh, change a lot of the major currencies of the world, giving them common features to eventually uh, merge everything into a single global currency system down the road. Uh, but I understand this cost you your job. Why? Well, that and a number of other things that happened as well that I began to take a stand on. And uh, I spoke out against some of these things as tactfully as I could for about 10 months or so. And then in April of 1985, I was given an ultimatum by a superior uh, telling me that I needed t to keep quiet about this or else risk losing my job. And so what did you do? Well, I took one more trip overseas that was already planned. I traveled with uh, the Indiana Secretary of State to Russia and China. And uh, on the trip home in San Francisco, as I was praying, the Lord gave me the words to write for a letter of resignation. And so after coming back from that trip, I submitted that letter. Uh, that was in late April, early May of, of 1985. And three weeks later, uh, I did leave my job. Uh, wait till you find out. You see, Gary was given an invitation to join the World Parliament Association. Most of you have never even heard of this organization, but he has documents and the types of people that are members that will amaze you. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. God has foretold of the establishment of a one world government controlled by the Antichrist in the end times. Now there is conclusive proof that this one world government is now underway. Call now and get Gary Kaas' prophetic three DVD series, The Antichrist Economic, Religious and Political System Exposed. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 1443. This three DVD expose series is so controversial that we couldn't share its contents on this television program. 
It exposes the existence of the World Constitution and Parliament Association that has developed a map which already divides America into regions that will come under the Antichrist's one world government. Shocking secret meetings hidden by the media held by the Vatican with religious and world leaders who want to usher in a one world government and religion. Christian leaders who are now embracing Chrislam, the merging of the Muslim and Christian faith, and so much more. Every believer has to be equipped with this so you're not going to be deceived. Don't miss out on getting Gary Kaas' prophetic 3 DVD series, The Antichrist's Economic, Religious, and Political System Exposed. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 1443. Call or you can write to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 1443 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Gary Kahn, and we're finding out information the secular press is not going to tell you. There's an organization I've never even heard of. It's called the World Constitution and Parliament Association, and Gary was uh, extended invitation to join, and he collected a lot of documents from this organization. Uh, tell me briefly about who, who is part of it and uh, what are they trying to do? Well, this organization has as its goal to lay the foundation for an ultimate uh, world government system. And they have held uh, mock sessions of a world parliament. They're calling it the Provisional World Parliament. Uh, they just recently had, uh, held the 12th such meeting. Uh, hundreds of uh, renowned people from around the world belong to this organization. What do they think of Jews and Christians, this organization? Well, at least some of the people in this organization, you have to understand it is tightly connected with the broader One World New Age movement. And many of the people at the forefront of that movement are very almost hostile toward Bible-believing Christians and conservative Jews. Uh, they are not very fond of us because they see us as standing in the way of them completing their agenda. Uh, you started to say some of the people that are members. Uh, yes, uh, you had people representing all the world's religions. Uh, at one point, one of the honorary sponsors was Cynthia Waddell. Uh, she was uh, the head of the World Council of Churches. There was also the head of uh, the World Muslim Congress, Dr. Inamula Khan, who belonged to it. But also, at one point, the chairman of the Nobel Prize Committee and former leaders from the UN, uh, former ambassadors, a lot of people with foreign policy experience who have uh, now, been plugged into this organization. Now, I, I've been examining your literature, and there are just uh, outstanding scientists, economists, uh, uh, top political type people connected with this, and they've had meetings with some of the top people in the world attending. Uh, why hasn't the secular media covered it? I haven't heard anything about this. You know, that's a question, Sid, that I ask myself all the time, and as far as I can tell, um, I believe there are people, I know there are some people in the mass media who actually support this agenda. Uh, others that at the very least are sympathetic toward it. And then I believe there's a third group of people that just want to bend over backwards to be politically correct and they're afraid to, to touch the subject. But I collected several hundred pages of documents being affiliated with this organization for a few years and um, it, it speaks for itself. You know, unless people were to accuse me of, of creating these letterheads and all the signatures of, uh, of the people on these documents, uh, you have to accept the fact that this is really taking place and that we need to know about now, it. Now, another area that you're very concerned about is something that a lot of people love. It, it's interfaith, like the UN has something for interfaith. Explain that. Yes. Uh, the United Nations has been pushing uh, an interfaith agenda for some time. They've held various activities and, um, and meetings along those lines. And last October, um, uh, a new program was kick-started by King Abdullah and Prince Ghazi of Jordan uh, called the World Interfaith Harmony Week. And uh, that week was designated to be the first week of February each year. So from now on, we will have uh, a week of interfaithism celebrated uh, during that week. Now, uh, Prince Ghazi and, and, and King Abdullah's efforts were based on previous UN interfaith efforts and the Common Word program, which is a Muslim call to bridge building with the Christian community. 
Now, in response to that, a number of Christian leaders got together and drafted their own document called Loving God and Neighbors Together. And in that And, and by the way, that sounds good to me. It, it that does. does not sound bad, yeah, Gary. Exactly. But in the document, they are calling for closer ties to Islam and equate the God of the Old and New Testaments with the Quran. And so when you look beneath the surface, uh, it really is interfaithism. It's paving the way to interfaithism, to accepting uh, the idea that other religions are pathways to God. And of course, if you believe the Bible and believe what Jesus said about himself, you cannot believe that. It is impossible. Tell me about why when they, uh, uh, when they, uh, someone like the National Association of Evangelicals would join an organization of, th that's heretical what you just said based on the Bible. Yeah. Why? Well, and they did, uh, the National Association of Evangelicals was one of 300 organizations and or individuals that signed that document. And I believe there is a trend in America today within Christianity. Um, it may have started out with good intentions to reach out to people of other faiths, but it's gone beyond that now. It is paving the way toward interfaithism and toward embracing other people's beliefs. In fact, one individual I'm aware of, uh, a prominent uh, evangelical Christian, recently celebrated Ramadan with a Muslim friend. And, you know, to celebrate um, rituals of other people's religions really crosses the line. Uh, Ramadan, for example, being the month during which uh, it is believed by Muslims that Muhammad received the words to the Quran. So unless we believe the Quran and support that, you know, how would you be able to uh, promote something like that? And something you told me that I've, I've been thinking about a lot lately is the, um, uh, what is the attraction between Islam and say, Catholicism. I, I mean, they seem to be opposites, but there is a common denominator. There is a common denominator. Um, uh, Muslims hold Mary in high regard. And one of the reasons for that is, and this is a little known fact, but Muhammad believed that when he would go to paradise, that Mary would be his wife. Hmm. In addition- I to, never heard that. Yes, in addition to that, um, you know, the apparitions that supposedly appeared at Fatima, uh, apparitions of, of Mary uh, appearing at Fatima, Portugal. Fatima happened to be the name of Muhammad's daughter. So many Muslims believe there was significance in the fact that Mary chose to appear in Fatima, a place named after Muhammad's daughter. And so there are other uh, reasons as well, uh, but this has brought uh, uh, some Roman Catholic leaders and Muslim leaders together, at least on the fringes, uh, to where they are talking now about some of the developments in the Middle uh, East. You know, uh, there, there's something wonderful going on with many Muslims. They're having dreams and visions of Jesus in large numbers. And I rejoice over that, but there's a flip side to it. Many are now having dreams and visions of Mary. You know, I told my wife years ago, Sid, that if the day ever came when Muslims claimed to see apparitions of Mary, uh, that things were far along and, and that this world system was getting ready to gel and, and come together. And that has been going on now for a few years. Hundreds of Muslims in Egypt, Indonesia, parts of Africa, uh, we're getting reports are claiming to have had or, or seen visions of Mary and they are telling them to be in favor of global unity, world peace, the coming together of the world's okay, religions. Okay, why is it necessary for the coming together of religions? I see why it's necessary for coming together on money, on, mm -hmm. on pol politics, but why religion? Well, if there is going to be a one world political and economic system, somehow the world's religions have to be brought together to make that possible. If they are in major disagreement with each other and don't see eye to eye, it would be very difficult to bring this one world system together and have it work. And so that's why globalists have been pushing this agenda for a long time. And, and you can really see, if you know your Bible, why the world is pushing to internationalize Jerusalem. We'll be right back. Don't go away. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. For he himself is our peace, who has made both Jew and Gentile into one, and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. His purpose was to create in himself, to create in himself. His purpose was to create 
One new man. One new man. One new man. Один новый человек. The Adam Hadash Echad. One new man. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Gary Kaw, and I am so fascinated with the information that Gary has put together. He spent a lifetime putting this together, because if you don't understand uh, the forerunner of the Antichrist system, then for sure you won't understand uh, the Antichrist. Uh, and Gary, I find it very interesting that Tony Blair, President Barack Obama, and the Pope had the same talking points within days of each other. Explain that. Uh, yes, um, uh, a couple summers ago, um, both of, all three of those uh, individuals began applying a lot of pressure on Israel. And there is an agenda behind this. Ultimately, where it is going is toward the internationalization of Jerusalem and also, I believe, uh, making Jerusalem the interfaith capital of the world. Why so is Christian. that important? Again, if you're going to have global government, you've got to be able to bring the religions together somehow. And they see in their minds that Jerusalem is the place to do this because it's where uh, Christianity, Judaism have their roots. Is Islam also has a, a stronghold there. And so trying to make this happen in Jerusalem is important to them. Uh, Tony Blair has gone so far as to establish the Tony Blair Faith Foundation, which is actually an interfaith foundation. Uh, in his own words, he has come out and stated that he is devoting the rest of his life to unifying the world's religions. Okay, uh, you, you expose the names of prominent Christians that are deeply involved in this. Uh, I don't understand how, how a real Christian could ever be deeply involved in this. I, I don't either. I, I, I believe that they rationalize and justify it in the name of world peace. But I am aware of the fact that on Tony Blair's board of directors, uh, there's a very prominent evangelical Christian whose name everyone would recognize, and also an Islamic cleric and people of other religions. And again, if it simply has to do with reaching out to people of other faiths uh, with the truth of Jesus, that's one thing. Uh, but to cooperate in building uh, something that will eventually unify the world's religions, to me that is a huge deception and we should not be promoting that. Okay, according to reading the Bible on a literal basis, which I do, a temple is going to be rebuilt. Uh, Gary, you have some fascinating information about this. Tell me. Well, uh, again, in order to rebuild that temple, uh, people have wondered over the years, how in the world is this ever going to happen, considering all the contention on the Temple Mount? And we don't know for sure how it's going to happen, but there are some uh, signs of how it could happen. Uh, the leading Muslim writer in the world right now, a man who is over, has over 65 million copies of his books in print, his name is Adnan Oktar. He writes under the pen name Har Harun Yahya is himself calling for the rebuilding of the temple, but he calls it a majid, or mosque, or a palace. And he believes this would be a great thing where people from around the world of different religions could come together and worship there. Yeah, but, but Jewish people would never accept something like that. Well, you would think so, but this three leaders from the newly reestablished Jewish Sanhedrin have actually met with Adnan Oktar in Turkey. Hmm. And after doing so, they posted the following statement on their website. This is an excerpt of that statement. They say, out of a sense of collective responsibility for world peace and for all humanity, we have found it timely to call to the world and exclaim that there is a way out for all peoples. It is etched in a call to all humanity. We are all the sons of one father, the descendants of Adam, and all humanity is but a single family. Peace among nations will be achieved through building the house of God where all peoples will serve as foreseen by King Solomon in his prayers at the dedication of the first holy temple. Now get this, together, each according to his or her ability, we shall work towards the building of the house of prayer for all nations on the Temple Mount in peace and mutual understanding. So these are some of the top Jewish people in the Sanhedrin endorsing the same idea that Adnan Oktar is putting forth after having met with him. And, and you talk about uh, the excavations under, uh, in Jerusalem, the Shrine of Omar. Tell me about that. 
Well, very quickly, uh, some Israeli journalists were secretly filming underneath the shrine of Omar and the tunnel that they were in. They discovered in an area off to the side uh, some early documents from Jewish priests from the first century, apparently that were put there uh, to safeguard them and protect them from the Roman invasion in 70 AD. And um, these documents talk about the early church, what the church believed, how it functioned, its practices, and it makes very clear that the early church did not adhere to replacement theology. In other words, they believed that God was still going to work mightily through the Jewish people and Israel in the years to come, especially in the last days. It's very sad that we don't know what the first Christians knew. For starters, they were all Jews. Now, you know they weren't involved in replacement theology, which basically uh, is half, half the Christians in the world say that the Christian has replaced God's plan for the Jew in Israel. And of course, God says, I change not. Boy, imagine the bombshell when this information is revealed. You can see things are really speeding up rapidly. And the Bible says, I'd rather you be hot or cold if you're lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. That's what Jesus says. Are you lukewarm or are you hot? If you're neutral, you're deceived. If you're just a seeker-sensitive Christian, you're deceived. You must be hot or cold. Either serve Him with all of your heart or don't stand up as a Christian. The good news is you don't have to look back. You can have a new beginning right now. Repent of your sins and tell Jesus, say it out loud, I want to be red hot for you, Lord Jesus. I want you to be my Lord. I ask for forgiveness of sin. I repent. Live inside of me, Jesus. God has foretold of the establishment of a one world government controlled by the Antichrist in the end times. Now there is conclusive proof that this one world government is now underway. Call now and get Gary Kaas' prophetic three DVD series, The Antichrist Economic, Religious and Political System Exposed. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 1443. This three DVD expose series is so controversial that we couldn't share its contents on this television program. It exposes the existence of the World Constitution and Parliament Association that has developed a map which already divides America into regions that will come under the Antichrist's one world government. Shocking secret meetings hidden by the media held by the Vatican with religious and world leaders who want to usher in a one world government and religion. Christian leaders who are now embracing Chrislam, the merging of the Muslim and Christian faith, and so much more. Every believer has to be equipped with this so you're not going to be deceived. Don't miss out on getting Gary Kaas' prophetic three DVD series, The Antichrist's Economic, Religious, and Political System Exposed. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 1443. Call or you can write to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 1443 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural, healing is taken to a whole new level with the supernatural language of Ivrit, Hebrew.